Hi, I'm Brian Butko, and I'm the author of The Ship Hotel, which is all about the SS Grandview that was out on Route 30 near Bedford. Now, Brian, you are known internationally for your uh, work on the Lincoln Highway and, and other subjects. What, how would you characterize your body of work? Uh, well, uh, I like to think of it as fun stuff taken seriously, that it's a lot of interesting topics, the highways and uh, diners and uh, the Klondike Bar, but I do take it seriously. I like to uh, do solid research and document it, but at the same time tell a good story, uh, thing, something that a wide audience would enjoy. What will we learn about the Ship Hotel that we didn't know? Wow, that's a great question. I would think that um, that there was a lot earlier history before it was there of the the curve in the road from uh, uh, Indian times to uh, uh, the turnpike uh, wagons that went through there and uh, uh, the various people that made their way struggled up that mountain. There were uh, military battles there and uh, then it comes to the 20th century when suddenly it becomes a tourist attraction. Well, uh, for those who don't know about the Ship Hotel, uh, what is it and why was it built in the first place? Well, the Ship Hotel was probably the greatest known uh, roadside attraction on the entire Lincoln Highway, which stretched from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. It was a hotel built to look like a steamship, but of course it was in the Allegheny Mountains. There was no water to be found, but uh, it made for a lot of good stories as to you know, whether a flood had washed it up on the mountains or not. But actually it was just a little square restaurant, and in the book we have uh, pictures of it and its various incarnations, everything from uh, uh, when it was just this little square building here, uh, when the flappers and tourists of the uh, 1920s were there, and then as there's a good picture of it hanging off the mountain. And so, um, it, like so many roadside attractions, the idea was to catch a driver's attention. You're driving by at 45 miles per hour. What better way than to make the building your biggest sign? I notice a lot of your books are designed in such a way that you could slip them into the uh, uh, seat pocket of a car. Are, are they meant to be traveling companions? Yeah, more and more uh, the idea is to have them so they're easy to take with you. And that certainly was the idea with this one uh, from just a year ago, Lincoln Highway Companion. I'd already done the big history of the highway and, and where it went and why. And so now I wanted to help people if they actually are ready to take the trip and maybe stop at a classic diner or motel, but wouldn't know where to begin if you're in Wyoming or Colorado. Well, now there's uh, listings and... Uh, photos that uh, can help guide you. It doesn't cover everything, but that's the idea. Leave a little bit of excitement for readers to discover themselves. Brian, um, I know you've written a lot of books on a lot of topic, but w what's your day job? Well, my day job, as you may know, Andy, is uh, working on the magazine of the History Center. It's called Western Pennsylvania History. It's a quarterly magazine, and uh, we really have the same idea there to make uh, subjects really interesting to readers, well illustrated, but yet uh, well researched. Brian, thanks so much for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you.